Hey everybody, today is a happy day for me because I just got unit one for kindergarten and first grade and second grade of my brand new shared reading units up in my TPT store learning at the Primary Pond. So I wanted to do a little giveaway um, so that all of you could enter to win a copy. All I need for you to do is just in the comments here, go ahead and let me know if you want the kinder, the first grade, or the second grade version of this. And then tonight, so it's not very much time, but tonight, which is Friday the 20th, I'm going to come back and choose a winner at 7 p.m. my time, which is 7 p.m. Central. So make sure that you let me know what grade you're teaching. Hey, Amy. And um, I will let you know if you're a winner tonight. So also wanted to share with you just a little bit of information, some tidbits about shared reading. And then I'm also going to answer some frequently asked questions that I get asked about these units because I know some of you have been waiting for them. So let's talk first about shared reading. What is shared reading? I, by the way, I'm going to be focusing on K2. That's the area that I'm most familiar with, the area, the grade levels that I know the most about. So if you happen to be an upper grade teacher, feel free to ask um, questions about how you might implement this in the upper grades, but our focus is really going to be K2. So shared reading is typically done whole group, although you can also do it in a small group setting, and I do that sometimes for my kiddos who maybe need a little bit of extra support or they need to focus on vocabulary and strategies, but typically it's done whole group. And this is just a lesson that you use to model and teach and have the kids practice different strategies. So it might be decoding, it might be fluency, it might be comprehension, um, might be vocabulary strategies. You can teach sight words during shared reading. There's like so many different things that you can do with shared reading, but usually the lessons last about 10, 10 to 20 minutes. And in my new shared reading units, those are, I would say like, they're, they're pretty flexible. You can make them as short or a little bit longer. Um, as fits your schedule, but generally speaking, they're about 10 or 15 minutes long. But in general, in pretty much every grade I've taught, our shared reading has been between 10 and 20 minutes long. So the special thing about shared reading that makes it different from a read aloud is when you're doing a read aloud, you're reading the book and you're talking to the kids and you're discussing and that's great, but the kids can't actually see the text. So shared reading is unique because you have the text displayed to the kids in some way. So that could be either a big book so they can see the words, or maybe um, you have just one copy of the book and then you put it under a document camera or a ladybug, whatever kind that you have, and then the kids can see the words and read along with you, so it's projected somehow. I've also done shared reading with, there are books on reading A to Z that are like the projectable level books. I've done it with that. Basically, however you wanna do it, the kids just need to be able to see the words so that they can read along with you. Now, sometimes teachers will ask, well, do all my kids need a copy of the book? And my answer is no, they don't. It's great if you have multiple copies so that later on the kids can go and read and, and reread it, but it's really not necessary. And I've done shared reading where, because you can do it where those like, where you use the basal stories from like, if you have a reading series and you can have the kids have their own copies. But when I did it that way, what I didn't like is I couldn't see that I had the kids' attention. I like them to be looking up at the screen and I'm pointing things out for them because when they have their own copies, it's nice in some ways, but in other ways it makes things tricky. Like if I wanna draw their attention to a specific word, then I'm not able to go around and point in their books to make sure that they're looking at the correct word, right? So if they're looking up at the front, I can point or I can have a student volunteer come up and point. So I just like doing it that way as opposed to giving them their own copies. Just my two cents on that. Um, shared reading involves some teacher modeling, right? Like there's a decoding strategy, you know, read the word in chunks. And I can use shared reading to model that strategy really easily because the kiddos can see the words that I'm decoding. However, shared reading is not as teacher driven as the read aloud. In the read aloud, the teacher, which is again, another instructional practice, the teacher, we are reading the book aloud to the kids and um, we're doing all the reading work for them. In shared reading, we want to involve them. We might be leading the reading, especially on the first day of shared reading, um, but we are wanting them to participate. We're wanting them to read along with us. As the kids get older, I tend to have us do less core reading and more like, okay, now we're gonna read this part together. But regardless of what grade I'm teaching, at least in primary, the kids are reading with me for at least part of the text. So there's a lot of student involvement. And then like with the decoding strategy that I mentioned of decoding something in chunks, well, I might model that a couple times, but then I've 
picked out words in the text where they're going to, you know, come and they're going to, I'm going to say, okay, how are we going to decode this word in chunks? And so they help me do it. So there's lots of student involvement. It's really a shared experience. The name says it all, right? Shared reading. We, me and the students are sharing the work. And I also put down here that Shared reading is a fabulous bridge between guided reading and read aloud. So when we think about the different levels of text that we choose to use with our students throughout the school day, probably, you know, unless we have kids who happen to just be super high flyers, um, probably the hardest text that we're going to have them interact with is the read aloud. And as I said before, that's really teacher driven. That's me reading the words, lifting the print off the page, reading to them. So that's hard. That is hard vocabulary words. Um, we can do a lot of comprehension work but most of my kids are not going to be reading at the same level that the read aloud text is. So that's like the most challenging text that we expose them to. And then we have texts that they read independently on the other end of the spectrum. And independent texts, not that they should not be hard for the kids, but the kids should be able to read them with ease, right? That they shouldn't be stuck or having to like fake read or anything. Those texts are typically going to be easy, right? So we've got easy to hard. So then guided reading falls somewhere in the middle where in guided reading, we're working with the kids with texts that are just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit too hard for them, right? Or they're not too hard for them, but the kids are able to be successful because we are sitting with them and we're providing the, you know, support and strategy help that they would need to be successful with those little bit hard texts, right? So I should have like drawn this out, but on a continuum, we've got independent reading to read aloud, and then we've got guided reading, which is closer to the independent reading level. But then there's a gap between that guided reading level text and then the other side, the read aloud text, right? We've got really hard, just a little hard. And shared reading falls nicely in between. Shared reading typically is with a text, and I know teachers do it differently, but the way I do it is it's with a text that is one to two guided reading levels harder than what most of your kids are reading during guided reading. Now I know it gets tricky because we have a big range of kids, right? So I kind of just look at, you know, where are all my kids at? Where do the most, where do most of them fall? Um, and then I'll pick a text that's just a little bit harder than that. So I, I think I do want to write this out because it'll make more sense then. Um, in terms of the text difficulty, we have read aloud, right? Which is hardest. And then we have shared reading, which is harder than what they're doing in guided reading, at least most of the kids. We have guided reading, and then we have independent reading. So this is the most difficult, and then this is the least difficult, right? So what can happen is if we don't have shared reading or we don't use shared reading texts that are a little bit harder than guided reading is that our kids can get stuck at their guided reading level, right? So let me think about like, if you think about levels B and C in guided reading, if you're a, a kindergarten teacher, you probably know what I mean. There's a big gap between those levels and that's true of other level, you know, other level gaps too, but to get kids from a B to a C can be tricky. And so during shared reading, we can be exposing them, for example, to those level C texts. We're getting them ready for moving into those level C texts. Because if they're always reading books that are like pretty easy for them or that are just a little bit hard, how are they going to be ready to advance and read those harder books during guided reading? Well, shared reading kind of answers that question because it's preparing the kids for what's coming next. So that's how I see um, shared reading fitting in with all the other you know instructional practices that we're doing during the school day obviously that's not all of them but that's kind of how I see it with the gradual release of responsibility so that's what your reading is again I'm talking about this for those of you that are just coming in welcome because I'm giving away a um, copy or several copies of my kinder first or second grade unit one flexible shared reading lessons that just came out there in my TPT store um, but now I'm going to answer some questions, and I know some of you are answering or asking questions, and I will try to get to those in a second, but I've already been asked a bunch of questions, so maybe this will address some of what you've been wondering about. So, let's see if I can back this up. I don't think that's going to work. Okay, so for unit one, now we're talking specifically about my units, the way I design them, because I know some of you have questions. In terms of topics covered, um, it varies based on the grade level, but generally speaking, decoding, comprehension, 
fluency, vocabulary. Obviously in kindergarten, the vocabulary strategy for unit one is more just like, look at the picture and listen to your teacher. <laughs> so it varies by the grade level. Um, in the preview file, which you can access by going to the link that I included in this post, I do have lists of all the lessons. And when you look through those, you will see um, the different strategies that are covered. However, also be aware that in addition to your normal reading strategies, this is unit one. So this is also about setting up your reading workshop, or even if you don't use reading workshop, setting up your independent reading time. Because as nice as it would be, our kids don't walk into our classrooms on the first day of school being able to sit and read independently for like 10 or 15 minutes. That just doesn't happen with most kids. So they need to learn your procedures, routines, expectations. So that is part of this unit too. And I'll talk a little bit about this and hopefully it won't be too confusing, but in the units, you are gonna have your book-based lessons. And that's when you have a book and you're teaching a strategy. Obviously at the beginning of the year, it's very simple. Like let's sit quietly, raise our hands to speak, let's make predictions, the book-based strategies, right? And these lessons are also, in addition, they're gonna have the routines lessons. Those are separate, like how to treat books. And so, the, the rate that you progress through the unit is really up to you or whether you teach all the lessons is up to you. But my recommendation is to have your shared reading time basically from like the third day of school on and that's when you teach your book based lessons like this is kinder. So the strategy is readers find alphabet letters in books. So you have your book based lesson and you know, you can just leave like 10 minutes for that. But then during another time of the day and when I do this is um, during the block that is eventually going to be centers or daily five during another time of your day work on the routines lessons which is a different section in this unit work on those routines lessons so that you are building your kids reading stamina and getting them to practice reading independently and with a partner so just to reiterate there's actually two types of lessons in here there are your, um, and this is true for kinder, first and second grade, there's your book-based strategy lessons, and then there's your routines lessons. So, you know, my recommendation is to teach two a day because um, they're relatively short, and again, I like to have that separate time where we're building stamina, learning to do either literacy centers or daily five, and that's when I do the routines lessons. But um, if you don't have time for both lessons a day, it's really not a problem. What I would do then is just alternate between like a book-based strategy lesson and then a routines lesson. So you can go back and forth. You can't do two in a day, but I would say try to do two just because it will move your kids along um, at a good pace. So that was topics covered. Another question, and I kind of talked about this already, is how long is a lesson? Each lesson, you can probably keep it to 10 minutes. Um, they're really flexible. It's like you can, you know, you can read the entire book, you can read part of the book. Um, and then there's like a section at the end where you're kind of like re going over what you talked about in the lesson and inviting the kids to do something. So you can, you know, cut out part of that. Sometimes there's an extension activity, like the kids can like draw or write about the, t the, the strategy, like identifying characters. So they really are very flexible. You can make them 10 minutes or 15 minutes, or you can draw them out a little bit more if that's what you want. Another thing I wanted to talk about was um, shared reading versus a mini lesson. So I feel like it's just out in the literacy world, it's not clear what the difference is. And there can be a difference, but there can also not be a difference. So this, in the past, let me just give you a little history. In the past, I have sometimes done a shared reading lesson where we're looking at a text and talking about it together, but then I've also done a separate strategy lesson. Um, a lot of you have told me like, you know, I really don't have time for two lessons. So you can combine them and it makes a lot of sense to combine them anyway. So when you're doing shared reading, you can also be doing your strategy mini lesson at the same time where, you know, we're reading a book together, for example, and they're helping me make predictions. And then at the end of the lesson, I like almost make it a little mini lesson and I say, okay, now that we've done this together, boys and girls, when you are reading, you can take a sticky note and you can draw or write to make your prediction and you know put those in your your book that you're reading so you're combining like a shared reading lesson and then you're also telling them hey now you can do this in your own reading because that's the point right so these lessons pull together a shared reading lesson and a mini lesson if that's something that you do separately however you can also separate them out um, 
hopefully this is not super confusing, but in the book based your strategy lessons, you've got your procedures and I know you can't see that, but that's okay. Um, you've got your procedures for what to do. And then there's this mini lesson wrap up and workshop suggestions. So that's carrying what you've just done in the shared reading into what the kids are doing on their own. So you can separate these out if you want to, or you can keep them together like they were designed. It's really up to you. Again, these are flexible because I tried to make these so flexible to really meet whatever your schedule is and whatever your needs are and your kids needs. Okay. When to start. So this is unit one, right? I know we're kind of all at different places, like going back to school, not going back for a while, already in school if you're in Australia maybe. Um, as far as when to start, I would say about third day, fourth day of school. Usually what I do is typically we'll have like a short week for the first week and it's just a couple days and I don't start then. But then that Monday or the following week is when we really get into this. And if you teach kindergarten and you're like, oh my gosh, that seems fast. Don't worry about it because the lessons are so simple at the beginning. It's like unit one, just let me find, or week one, readers listen and think about stories. That's the first mini lesson. Um, day two is readers enjoy rereading books. So you're really just sharing this book experience with them, which you're probably already doing anyway. It's not hard stuff, especially for kindergarten. We start out slowly. So I really feel like you can begin the third or fourth day of school if that's something you want to do. Another question I've been asked is, what about the books, right? Like, obviously, this does not have books in it, and you are going to need to supply books. What I've done, and again, coming back to the theme of flexible, 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 is for each week, I typically recommend that you use one text. Um, you, can you can switch text midweek if you want. Lessons are very flexible, and you can use whatever text you want. Um, but for each week, what I've done here is I've suggested one text or another text so you have two options and I talk about using two options so you would either do like for example um, in week four three billy goat scruff or three little pigs so you can choose either one and I've got information about how to use either one um, or I've described a text that you can choose of your own so it says use three billy goat scruff three little pigs or a fairy tale of your choice, choose one with characters that speak. So I'll kind of tell you, hey, like if you don't want to use either of these two, that's fine. But then I'll describe what kind of text you would want to choose for the lesson. Um, some people are wondering about big books as well. You can use big books, and I love big books, but I know that they can be expensive and sometimes hard to find. So what I mentioned at the beginning was putting a book under the document camera and just having some way of projecting it so that the kiddos can see the words clearly and read along with you. So you can use a regular size book, you can use a big book, you can use like a special book that's projectable on your interactive board. It's totally up to you as long as the kids can see the words. Also with books, I wanted to talk about reading level. So when I was talking about the different read aloud, shared reading, guide re guided reading, independent reading, I was talking a lot about like reading level. So Reading level is obviously integral to the shared reading um, units. So a couple of things about that. Generally speaking, as I said before, I like to choose texts for shared reading that are one to two guided reading levels above what most students are reading. This means a couple of things. First of all, it means that when I suggest another type of text like that you might want to use if you don't like these two texts, that then gives you the freedom to say, okay, well, you know, the texts that she has are good for most students, but my class needs something different. So that flexibility gives you the option of choosing a different text level um, that may fit your kids' needs better. So I wanted to put, out, put that out there. And then another thing I wanted to mention is that for kindergarten, and this is unique to kindergarten, and it's also true of the first two weeks of first grade, um, at the beginning of kindergarten, at least in my experience, my kids have not been reading coming in. So to choose texts that are one to two reading levels higher than what they're reading is a little hard because they're really not reading at all yet. And then it also limits you to books that are very, very simple. So here's how I kind of like reconciled this problem in my mind. I love sharing books with kids that are like 
I Went Walking by Sue Williams or The Little Red Hen. I love those traditional stories, right? And I like to share those at the beginning of the school year because then my kindergartners, and this is true of first graders too, I can give them copies of those books, like other copies from the library or whatever, and they can go and they can pretend to read those books because we've read them together. So I really like using those fun, repetitive texts, the fairy tales at the beginning of the school year, but then my concern was like, okay, well, what about the reading level? So the way I reconciled this was I chose a lot of repetitive text so that the kids could, you know, remember it and read along with me. But for the first unit of kindergarten, I did not worry about the reading level. So the reading levels, and this is again unique to kindergarten, and the first two weeks of first grade, the reading levels for kindergarten are not going to correlate with what your kids may or may not be reading. It's just fun, repetitive text. They will learn the words. They will read along with you. And you can do all the different strategies without actually having text that they can really read. And that has worked out fine for me in the past. Now with the second half of unit one and um, second grade, I do stick more closely to the reading level guide just because those kiddos probably can read a little bit more than beginning kindergartners. So I just wanted to, you to know that that's really specific to kindergarten and their needs. I just remembered that I didn't talk about how long the units were. So unit one for kindergarten is seven weeks long. And no, I'm sorry. I lied. It's six weeks long. Unit one for kinder is six weeks long. And then first grade, it is five weeks long. And second grade is also five weeks long. Another question I get asked a lot is, are these editable? And so the lesson plans, yes, those, when you get the PDF, they're not going to be editable in the PDF. But there's, I don't think I have the page in here, but there's like a, a important information sheet, and at the bottom of that important information sheet, look for this link because it says, if you want to be able to edit the lesson plans, click here. And there will be a separate PowerPoint version that you can click on and download from Google Drive, and that will have for you all these lessons, but they will be editable so that you can change them or you know add in your own standards or whatever you need to do. The only things that are really not editable, and I don't even have them um, bound here, I just have the lessons, are things like, you know, in, in kinder we have some like retelling cards or strategy visuals, bunches of strategy visuals. Those are not editable just because there are copyright agreements on the graphics that I purchase. So I'm not able to make those editable, but the lesson plans definitely are. So look for that separate link if you want to edit the lesson plans. Another thing I've been asked is, what about skipping or reordering lessons? And my answer is yes. Skip lessons. If you can't do shared reading five days a week, no problem. Um, you can reorder them. Generally, what I do is I use one book throughout the week and I teach different strategies with it. But like, let's say you want to spend a couple of days on predictions. And so, I know you probably can't see this, but in the kinder, week three, day one, readers make predictions from the cover. And then week four, day one, they're making predictions all throughout the story. So, you really, if you want to spend several days on predictions, you would just need a couple of different texts, right? So you would pull this lesson from week three and week four together, and you would just kind of rearrange, and it really is not a big deal. The only lessons that truly require that the kids have read the text already usually is when they are um, like retelling, or sometimes we act out on the last day of the week, they'll act out the story. Those lessons, which are usually on day five, are really the only ones that absolutely require that it's a text they've seen before. So again, skip lessons, reorder them, do it as you see fit. And then the last thing down here that you probably can't see is some of you might be wondering, well, this is unit one, awesome, but where are the rest of the units? And my answer is that they're coming. So I have them pretty much all planned out and outlined, but it's a whole other story to actually get them in a really clear format that will be good for you to use. So that takes a little time. I will have more units available um, around September 15th. That's when the bundle will be available. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And then if you purchase this because you're like, I've got to get going in my school year, it's not a problem if you want to get the bundle later. You would just get the bundle and then TPT support can refund you the purchase of that individual unit so that you're not paying for it twice. So if you're ready to get started, and have this for your kids before September 15th, go ahead and get this, and then when you get the bundle, you can just get a refund, and it's not a big deal. Okay, I think I have covered everything that I thought of, but let me kind of scroll down and see if there's any questions. You can feel free to retype your questions too, because I 
kind of lose them with everybody as I see lots of people are entering exciting if you haven't entered yet make sure that you do because tonight Friday at 7 is when I am going to um, pull the winners okay Lauren I don't have this for third grade I'm sorry about that okay let's see I'm not sure that I'm seeing other questions thank you all so much for entering I'm super excited to share this with you, Kiana, yes, I will send, I will email out a reminder and I'll post on Facebook and Instagram when um, the bundle is ready around September 15th, maybe a little sooner, but not 100% sure yet. Alrighty, well, if you think of questions later or um, you have a question about the units, feel free to leave me a comment or just comment on the actual DPT link. I have the link there for you. Again, I'm going to come back at 7 p.m tonight so central time and i will pull the winner so make sure that you've told me what grade level you want if you're a winner i'll just comment and respond to you i'll try to tag you although sometimes facebook like doesn't let me for some reason but i'll reply to your comment and then i'll just ask you to email me um and then that's the way that i'll get you the unit so thanks for watching good luck and let me know if you have any questions